So this is my um, first time doing a full length video of showing how to bling a Stanley tumbler. So I'm not going to do the whole cup on this video, but I'm going to show you basically how to start it, the basics that you're going to need to do, and how to taper and do the bottom. So the first thing I did is I sanded. Let me grab. I sanded with a, you can use a nail file, a buffing block, or an e-file, which is like a Dremel. And you just lightly sand it. Be careful around the logo because it can, um, the logo is painted on, so it can take it off a little bit. So I would just very carefully lightly sand that. Um, don't sand it too hard because then it'll just come right off. And then you take an alcohol wipe or you can wash it with hot soapy water. But I like to use an alcohol wipe as well because if there's any oils from your hands or anything, it'll help clean that off um, and get any of the debris off. Okay. So the other thing we're going to do is this is going to be a champagne cup. So I want the logo to really stand out. And if I did a, you know, a topaz -y kind of color, light Colorado topaz, you wouldn't really be able to see the logo. So I'm going to back paint it with this dark brown. And then we're going to use a smoked topaz. So if you get the kit for the champagne one, this is the color that you're going to get for the logo and then you'll you can just go and onto Amazon I actually have it linked in my link tree and um, there's an Amazon storefront and these are in there and I think it's a set of 36 or 24 something like that um, acrylic paint pens and these are really nice to be able to paint without Having to bust out like your your you know water paint brushes all that kind of stuff, and you might hear children in the background and noise because this is not a professional setup. I am not a videographer. It's professional for blinging. It's not professional for videos. <laughs> but it is what it is. I wanted to get this out here for all you guys who are doing the kits. And even if you're not doing the kits, that's okay too. If you have rhinestones, all the rhinestones you need, you can use this too. Okay, so I'm just going to go through and I'm going to paint this all in. And I like to do this first so I can kind of let it dry while I set my foundation row. And the one nice thing about back painting is it is forgiving because you're going to have the rhinestones covering it. So it doesn't need to be super fancy perfect because it just needs to basically peek through the rhinestones enough that it helps color in and make it look nice and smooth like this one. Here's a kind of um, example. I just back painted with this dark blue actually this cup came dark blue so I didn't even have to back paint this one but I just used these dark Montana blue rhinestones and filled it in and so it makes it look nice and kind of cohesive okay and while that's drying what we're gonna do is take this off of the stand because we're going to want to get the foundation row set so one way you can do this is you can do this along the very edge or you can use this as a guideline which might be easier if this is your first time don't sand the silver part and just do this very top use this as a white a guide this um, lighter line right here where the paint ends use that as a guide for all your rhinestones that could make it a little bit easier but the other thing you can do is hope and pray that your glue isn't plugged up like usual because I always forget to clean it out. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our glue bottle. And this has Fusion Tech in it, which will come with your kits. It's an easy, non-toxic beginner glue. And you're just going to put a thin line down. Uh, 
Okay. Let's see here. Okay. And then I'm going to grab my little... I'm going to close it up. Make sure you're covering up your glue in between. And then what I'm going to do... Let me move these out of the way. So this is... I don't know if I showed you that, but these are the markers that come in the pack of markers. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rhinestone tray. And in your kit, you're going to be getting one that looks like this. So you'll put your rhinestones in here and you can just shake it and they'll flip over. And then when you're, you know, say you need to take a break, you got to do something else. You can always close it back up because it's got that nice little magnet. And then when you're ready to change out the color for the next part, you can just unplug this little hole and pour it back into your bags. So for the majority of this cup, you're going to be using SS20. To here, you're going to, you're not going to need any tapering stones. If you um, get your rhinestones uh, basically spaced out properly. So we're going to take the SS20 rhinestones. I'm going to flip all those over. And then I'm going to take them and place them. And um, one tip that is really awesome is if you have like one of those rice heating bags or anything like that, you can always take them and place it down and nestle it right into it. Oops, I gotta pause. Um, nestle it right into it and it'll kind of hold it and keep it from rocking around. The other thing I like to use honestly is um, I get these little lash, like lash extension lash pads on Amazon and I can position them wherever I want and they kind of keep things from rolling around. So I also like those, um, but they really basically pretty much only use my Bowen Bling Queen except for this part and I'll show you why. Because once I get all these placed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it upside down and make sure that they're pressed all the way down to the, the mat, to the ground, and then that will make sure that they're all even with the rim. And the other thing is, is sometimes if you push them too far down, they'll come up a little bit. You don't want any edge pe peeking up above the rim. So just make sure they, you know, you got to kind of fuss with it a little bit. And then you're just going to go around and get all these placed. Be careful of the paint on this. Don't stick your finger right in it and smear it. And there should be about 66 or 67 stones around the 40 ounce. And on the 50 ounce, I think it's 61 or 62, something like that. You're just going to take your little wax pencil and pick up the rhinestones and place them. You just kind of wiggle them a little bit in the glue to get them seated. And the tool I'm using is a crystal katana. It is honestly my favorite, but it's something that is a little bit of an investment. It's totally worth it, but it's about, you know, I think it's like 24 Actually, it's on sale right now. It's about $24. So um, that's what, if you're going to do this long term, I would say for sure get one of those. It's amazing. But until then, the little wax pencils work great. And, you know, if you get a little bit too much glue, that's okay. Just kind of spread it around. It's not that big of a deal. This is a non-toxic glue, so you don't have to worry about it getting on your skin. And one thing I will do is sometimes I'll bring my tray as close as possible so there's the least amount of traveling that I have to do. Now it's going to eventually get to where this will roll and hit. So what I'll do sometimes is I'll just lift it up and do it like this. Okay, and then once you get all the way around, you're going to end up where... You can maybe squeeze another one in if you really squeeze the stones tight together or if you spread them out just a little bit 
then you'll get them all to fit. So just kind of play around with it. Okay, so what you'll do is once you get your foundation line set all the way across the top, what you're going to do is, oops, a little bit, is you're going to let it dry because once it's dry, then you can start layering the rest of your stones in. So I'm going to do it even though I know it's not dry yet because um, I've had lots of practice, so I feel comfortable doing it, and if it moves a little bit, I know how to adjust it. So what you're going to do to fill in the honeycomb pattern next is you're going to take a little, you can do two ways. You can either do a line like this. The problem you can run into, it's a little bit too much glue, spread it out a little bit is that you can end up with too much glue and it puddles up in between the stones. So what you're doing is you're just nestling each one inside of the other. And then eventually it'll all lock in and it'll look like a honeycomb pattern on a beehive. And if you get glue on the end of your wax tip, sometimes it won't pick up stones or it'll be really tacky and keep pulling them back up. So just make sure you keep your tool clean as possible. And if you have a pair of like extra little scissors, not scissors, sorry, um, tweezers, you can use those. I use tweezers a lot. Okay, and then I'm going to show you the other method you can do. This is the one I prefer to do, but at the same time, sometimes I want to go faster and I just do the line. So what you do is you're going to go in between each little nook and put a dot of glue. And then you take your rhinestone and place it right in between. And this is why having your foundation line is so important. Having it nice and even and set, but also having it nice and secure. Because adjusting this row, you might actually push this top row out. And if your foundation line is crooked at all, the rest of your top will be messed up. So this is the most important line in this whole entire cup. See, and I've got some glue on the end of my pick up tool, that's why it's trying to pick up the rhinestone. And I've had this katana, crystal katana, for a year now I think it has been, and I've done many, many cups, and shoes, and hats, I've done all kinds of things with it. So, I mean, these things last a very long time. Okay, let's get back to it. And as this um, fusion tack dries, it'll start to go clear. So you'll know that it's starting to dry on you, which is kind of nice. Gives you a good guide to know if your glue is too dry. Because if it's too dry, it won't, you know, it won't cure and bond the two things together. Okay. So this glue, the fusion tack, will cure in about five to seven days. So while this is curing, you just leave it be for five to seven days, and then, then you can wash it, and it'll be perfectly fine. And I have another video where I show how to do the logo. So I'm not, um, I'm not going to show how to bling that, but you will get in your kit a set of stones that will correlate with your logo that you have picked out and the colors that you picked out. So I'm going to show you how, what happens when we start doing this curve. Because this pattern, you will not need any fillers until you get down to here. And the other thing is around, so what you'll do is you'll do this honeycomb pattern and you'll stop around the logo and around the handles for as much as you can with this SS20. Once the SS20 won't fit anymore without it covering it up, you just leave that part blank and we'll come back and you can do that later. You'll fill it in with filler stones like these. 
and you just kind of fill it in with whatever size stones fill in the spaces. You don't have to keep the honeycomb pattern. Same with around the handle. Okay, and then I'm going to show you real quick how to do this part. So we're going to pretend like there is a, a row right here of stones that are correlating all the way down. So let me get these right here. So we'll just quickly lay some down. Now, when I'm doing this for a client's cup, I will not be using um, fusion tack or any kind of beginner glues just because I want it to be as secure as possible. And um, it's kind of my way of ensuring that their product will have the longest lasting product that they possibly can have. So when I'm doing it, I'm going to use usually a two-part epoxy like CG500. Or I might use, um, for different parts, I may use a um, Ninja Super Tight a Super Grip, like along the rim and along the edge. There's so many different glues that you can use. But this is the one that is the best for learning, and I don't have to worry about y'all having... Um, you know, respirators or any kind of airflow issues. This one's super easy to use. It's completely non-toxic. Kids can use it. Oops, runaway stone. There's always, always one in the bunch. Trying to get away from me. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the next row. So then, let's see here this right here and one thing that'll start to happen oops, is that you will end up with a spot where it doesn't quite fit see how it's kind of uneven it barely fits but it's kind of shoving the next one out so what what will happen is the next one first let me put some glue down that might help Also, these won't be shifting around up because you'll have all these ones built before it that'll be kind of locked in place. So don't be worried about that. That's just because I'm trying to show you kind of an idea of what's going to happen when we're tapering. It's starting to get a little tight there because as it's tapering and getting smaller in circumference, that means there's going to be less room for the rhinestones. Can I get it to fit? Nope. So we'll put that there. And what we'll do, adjust that, is we're going to get the next size down, which is an SS16, and that will be in your kit. It'll be the other bag of smaller rhinestones. And you're going to center it. You know what? No, I think that that will fit a 20 right there. Let's try it again. Sometimes you think, nope, it's not going to fit. And then you look and you're like, just kidding. It worked. It just needed a little zhuzhing. A little zhuzhing. Now it definitely isn't going to fit there. So let's try. Nope. So we're going to put it, this one, I like to put the next one. So then I know where to center the smaller filler stone and you want to center it in the space you don't want to shove it all the way up touching because it's going to look funny for the next one so you try and center it and make it take up as much kind of real estate as possible so that it's not as noticeable and then you just continue to do that see right there i can't fit one so i'm going to put an ss16 so what you'll do is you'll go and if it doesn't if it's not going to fit Go to the next one, see if that one will fit, and then go back and see what will fit in that space. Because sometimes you might have to go even smaller to the filler stone bag that I gave you guys of the same color, and you might have to use some of the little ones to fill in the space. Just try to make it look as nice as possible. And that's how you do tapering. Okay, so then the next thing I'm going to show you, wow, this is wildly uneven. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, yep, and that is why that one fit because it was not even. But you guys get the idea. Here, let me push this up a little bit. That's going to drive me insane. That's going to drive me bananas. Okay. Let's see if I can get it. Now that one might fit there. And this happens a lot where you just kind of move things around. Okay, let's get that one. Especially as you're learning. And don't feel bad about it. Because that's what it's all about is learning and correcting yourself before it gets completely cured and then you want to cry. Just go back and kind of look. See how that's kind of pushed up a little bit? We're going to move it down so it doesn't look so high up in there. Same with this one. It's a little high up. So we're going to just move it down a little bit. Okay. So then the next thing is, is you're going to end up getting as close as you possibly can to this curve. But eventually you'll get to where a stone won't fit without it wanting to be half on and half off the space. So it'll wiggle around and it won't really work. So you'll stop about right here. I'd say about right here is where you'll you'll have to stop where a rhinestone won't fit anymore and you leave it blank because what we're going to do is actually go to the bottom and you're going to set your foundation line on the bottom and make sure it's pushed back enough that there is absolutely no overhang when you look at it you do not want to see any overhang that you can easily push off because if you see any free edge hanging off and it'll be a little farther down than you'd think well higher up I guess is more what you say it's going to be about right here because the curve starts right here. So you'll want to be lower than that to make sure the whole rhinestone is sitting flush on the cup. Because if there's any of that edge hanging off, you will easily be able to knock it off or for water to get underneath it. So the other thing what we'll do is you set a foundation line here on the bottom and you're gonna and do a honeycomb and work your way up to about right here until it won't lay flat anymore. And then you're gonna take your filler stones and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean on another cup. You're going to take little filler stones and fill it all in, in the little spaces in that crack. And then, once you're done with that, you'll go back up to this logo, finish out the logo, filling it all in, doing the logo. You can actually do the logo before you start this part. When, while your foundation line is setting and drying, you can always go and do the logo. That's usually what I do. I go and do the logo part. Let that dry so that when I go back to do the filling around here, this logo is nice and set so I don't have to worry about getting in between and moving the stones around. And then you'll do the handles and then you'll be all done. I'm going to show you on a cup that's finished what I mean by doing that crease with the smaller stones. Oops. So there is a crease right here and there's filler stones that fill in this little gap. And so you're going to want to be careful and you'll kind of wiggle them around to make sure that the stones don't wiggle, that they're nice and flush against the cup and just fill this crevice in until it looks nice and smooth and even. And it doesn't have to be honeycombed in there. You can just kind of do almost like a scatter fill pattern where you're just filling the space to make it look as nice as possible. And like there are rhinestones in every single spot that there can be. And you'll do the same thing around the handles. I don't know if you can see around the handles and you'll do the same thing around the logo where you'll go in and fill whatever remaining spaces you possibly can with the smaller stones. And then that's how you do a Stanley cup. But see how I, I started on the bottom, I did a foundation line and see how high up it goes? It actually goes up much higher than you would think it would need to before that curve starts. And then once that foundation line set, you work your way up until about right here. And then you have to do filler stones to fill in this little gap. And that's how you get a nice clean edge on the bottom. That's how you do a Stanley Cup. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. And